Dear students, welcome to all of you in EPG Partshala in paper Atmospheric Processes under the subject of Environmental Sciences. Today we are going to discuss about a topic that is aerosols in the atmosphere. In the learning outcomes in this module we will learn about the aerosol in the atmosphere, aerosol and the role in weather and climate, aerosol observations. Let us start with the introduction. Aerosol particles are the dispersed solid or liquid particles in the carrier gas. The carrier gas in the atmosphere is the air. By definition, everything which is known gases form in the atmosphere are the aerosol particles. These tiny ubiquitous particles in the atmosphere have the size range from few nanometers to several micrometers and are responsible for the reduction in visibility and cloud formation. The aerosol particles have an impact on the human health since we inhale them along with them air. Especially aerosol particles with diameter less than 2.5 micrometer or we can say PM2.5 cause respiratory problems. Aerosol particles are generated naturally as well as by anthropogenic activities. In natural ways, we can see wind-blown dust, sea sprays, pollen emissions from trees, forest fires, volcanic ash, etc. Whereas the anthropogenic sources uh, or we can say human activities which produce aerosol are the vehicular exhausters, industrial chimney exhausters, agriculture activities, wood sito burning, etc. Some of the aerosol particles are nucleated from gas phase by gas to particle conversion. The aerosol particles which are released into the atmosphere, example dust, are called primary aerosol particles. And those which are formed in the atmosphere through gas to particle conversion are called as secondary aerosol particles. Physically and chemically, aerosol particles are very complex. These particles can exist in liquid state, solid state or mixed of both liquid and solid. Chemically, these particles can be organic, inorganic or mixed of both organic and inorganic. Now, the atmospheric concentration of aerosol particles is determined by the wind. For example, the dust of one area is transported to other area by the wind. The processes which affect the aerosol concentrations are coagulation that is two particles collide and stick together, growth of particles by uptake of water that is swelling, chemical transformations, removal of aerosol by the rainfall, deposition through gravitational settling, etc. These processes also have a profound impact on the size of aerosol particles. The larger aerosol particles have higher sedimentation velocity, so they settle on the surface faster than the smaller aerosol particles. The very aerosol, very small aerosol particles have very high Brownian motion and higher staking rate with the other aerosol particles. Due to the high Brownian motion, small particles can also stick to the surface when they are near to the surface. The aerosol particles play a very important role in climate system. As they affect the climate system in different ways, either directly or indirectly. Indirectly, the aerosol particles scatter and absorb the incoming solar radiation and can absorb outgoing thermal radiation. In indirect, the aerosol particles help in cloud formation as some of the aerosol particles act as a seed for the droplets and ice crystal formation in the clouds. Now coming to the types of aerosol particles. Aerosol particles are typically classified according to the origin or source. Figure 1 gives an account of different aerosol particles diameter and picture of aerosol particles taken with a microscope. Anthropogenic aerosols are mainly of size below 1 micrometer and natural aerosols such as dust, sea salt and pollens 
have more than one micrometer in size. Aerosaurus also have a geographical origin. In a desert, for example, due to dry soil and strong winds and convection currents, the dust particles can get lifted above the Earth's surface into the atmosphere and sometimes into the upper atmosphere. Near the seashore and over the ocean, sea spray aerosols are important in contributing to the weather and climate. The satellite image over Indian region, especially near the foothills of Himalaya, show very clear indication of such increase in the aerosol particles and sometimes they get trapped in the atmosphere due to stable conditions of the atmosphere. This condition has an important implication to our weather. The fog layer could reduce the radiation reaching the surface which can result in less surface heating. Aerosol particles over a city may also be different as the road transportation industries and human activities such as construction, space heating, etc. may cause significant contribution to aerosol concentration over the city. Major aerosol types are listed below. The processes of their formation are given in the brackets. Sea spray, which is formed by the water bubble bursting over the ocean resulting in the emission of particles into the atmosphere. Mineral and agricultural dust, that is the dust from the dry land is lifted into the atmosphere by the wind. Volcanic aerosols, the volcanoes can emit the materials from the interior of the earth to the atmosphere. After cooling of the plume gas to particle conversion can also take place. Biogenic particles, the plants emits, emit pollens into the atmosphere. Many plants also emit aromatic gases into the atmosphere, condensation of which can form VOCs, that is volatile organic compounds. The airborne viruses and bacteria also fall in this category. Smoke, which is uh, produced by burning. Natural gas to particle conversion, that is sulfate, uh, sulfates over ocean surfaces with dimethyl sulfide. Industrial emissions, which include soot, smoke, road dust. Product of gas to particle conversion, that is secondary aerosol. Aerosol particles are found in various sizes and from various sources as shown in figure 1. Aerosol particles have size range from nanometer to tens of micrometers. It is useful to describe their number concentration in terms of size ranges. The size ranges of aerosol particles are called thimo, thimodes. There are four modes of aerosols as follows. Nucleation mode, Atkin mode, accumulation mode and coarse mode. The slide 13 shows the figure represents various categories of aerosols particles based on their size in nanometer. As aerosol particles are formed or released into the atmosphere, they are carried to higher altitude by the wind, where their concentration is less compared to the near to the surface. So if we look at the vertical variation of concentration of aerosol particles in the atmosphere, it shows a typical exponential decrease with height. Now, formation and growth of aerosols. Background aerosol exists over land and heights above, the above about 5 km and over the oceans far from shore about 3 km. Aerosol particles of terrestrial origin are formed by number 1. Gas to particle conversion that is GPC. Drop to particle conversion that is DPC. Involving the evaporation of clouds and raindrops which contain dissolved and suspended matter. Third one is bulk to particle conversion, that is BPC, involving mechanical and chemical disintegration of the solid and liquid earth surface. The secondary aerosol particle can form in the atmosphere by following ways. The homogeneous nucleation of new particles in supersaturated vapor, for example, plant inhalations, combustions, volcanic activity, etc. Condensation of vapor molecules on the drops or solid particles close to the source. For example, 
इंडस्ट्रियल और मैन मैनमेड और नेचुरल फॉइज होमोजीनस न्यूक्लिएशन बाई गैस फेज केमिकल रिएक्शन सच एज इन द केस ऑफ सल्फेट एरोसोल फॉर्मेशन फ्राम एसिड्स जी पी सी मे ऑल्सो इन्वॉल्व प्री एग्जिस्टिंग एरोसोल पार्टिकल्स न्यूक्लिएशन द न्यूक्लिएशन इज अ प्रोसेस इन विच गैस मॉलिक्यूल्स एग्रीगेट टू फॉर्म क्लस्टर्स एज शोन इन द फिगर टू अनटिल इट रीच एस ए क्रिटिकल साइज विच इज ए क्रिटिकल क्लस्टर दिस क्लस्टर दैन फॉर्म द एरोसोल पार्टिकल विच इज ऑफ द साइज ऑफ ए फ्यू टेंस ऑफ नैनोमीटर्स द फिगर शोन इज अ टिपिकल फॉर सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड एरोसोल फॉर्मेशन इन द एटमोसफेयर देर आर मैनी स्पीशीज विच कैन फॉर्म इन दिस वे इन द एटमोसफेयर फॉर एग्जाम्पल सेकेंडरी ऑर्गेनिक एरोसोल्स ऑल्सो नोन एज एस ओ ए होमोजीनियस एंड हिटोरोजीनियस न्यूक्लिएशन ऑफ सेकेंडरी एरोसोल पार्टिकल्स न्यूक्लिएशन ऑफ एरोसोल पार्टिकल्स कैन बी आइदर होमोजीनियस वायर गैस मॉलिक्यूल्स डू नाट रुकायर ए सरफेस और ए पार्टिकल टू गेट न्यूक्लिएटेड और हिटोरोजीनियस वायर ए सरफेस इज नीडेड फॉर गैस टू न्यूक्लिएट इन टू लिक्विड और सॉलिड इन होमोजीनियस न्यूक्लिएशन न्यू पार्टिकल्स ऑफ फॉर्म वायल हिटोरोजीनियस न्यूक्लिएशन डज नॉट लीड टू द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ न्यू पार्टिकल्स वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट होमोजीनियस न्यूक्लिएशन प्रोसेस इन द एयर इज बाइनरी न्यूक्लिएशन वायर मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ टू गैसेज आर इन्वॉल्व इन स्लाइड एटीन वी कैन सी द फिगर शोज सच ए प्रोसेस वायर मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड गैस एंड वाटर वेपर कंबाइंड टू फॉर्म एंड सॉल पार्टिकल्स दीज सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड वाटर मॉलिक्यूल्स आर ऑफ थ्री टू ट्वेंटी नैनोमीटर इन डायमीटर इन द रिमोट रिमोट ओशनिक एटमोसफेयर सच एज होमोजीनियस न्यूक्लिएशन इवेंट सच होमोजीनियस न्यूक्लिएशन इवेंट्स कैन प्रोड्यूस मोर दैन वन हंड्रेड फोर पार्टिकल्स इन ए वॉल्यूम ऑफ वन सेंटीमीटर इन शॉर्ट पीरियड आफ्टर द क्रिटिकल क्लस्टर हैज फॉर्म बाय द एरोसोल पार्टिकल्स कैन ग्रो विद बाई कंडेंसेशन ऑफ सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड मॉलिक्यूल्स एंड वाटर वेपर मॉलिक्यूल्स लीडिंग टू द ग्रोथ ऑफ द एरोसोल पार्टिकल्स एज दिस स्लाइड नंबर नाइनटीन द फिगर शोज द न्यूक्लिएशन एंड द सब्सिक्वेंट ग्रोथ प्रोसेस ऑफ एटमोसफेरिक बाइनरी ऑफ सल्फर एंड वाटर एरोसोल पार्टिकल साइज डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड मोड्स इन फिगर थर्ड different modes of aerosol size distribution and associated processes are indicated aerosol particles with diameter 0.01 micrometer are called the nucleation mode those with diameter 0.01 to 0.1 micrometer are atkin mode those with diameter between 0.1 and 1 micrometer are called accumulation mode and those having diameter 1 to 10 micrometer are called coarse particles note that c particles mineral dust and biological particles are in the coarse mode if the size is greater than micro micrometer those are called gynt particles particles with diameter less than 1 micrometer also called fine particles formation and growth of aerosol particles is illustrated in figure 3 coarse mode particles are mostly directly emitted into the atmosphere the nucleation mode particles are formed in the atmosphere by the gas to particle conversion the nucleation mode particles can further grown by condensation to form atkin and accumulation mode particles in slide 21 this figure shows the modes formation and transformation processes leading to the formation of aerosols or we can say these are related to the aerosols the aerosol particles as it reaches the size close to 100 nanometer through condensation and coagulation can give rise to atkin or accumulation mode particles some of these particles can act as cloud condensation nuclei that is ccn and form cloud droplets of the size of 1 to 10 micrometer the coagulation process may lead to the sticking together of two particles the cloud droplets thus may have a few aerosol particles inside them large aerosol larger aerosols particles acting as cloud condensa condensation nuclei need only a small super saturation that is saturation above 100% relative humidity of ambient air due to their surface area to form 
cloud droplets. But smaller CCN needs much higher supersaturation. Brownian motion is the random movement of particle, particles suspended in a fluid. Particles diffuse or collide and coalesce through coalescence process due to these random motion. In slide 23, this figure presents the condensation and evaporation processes linked to the aerosol. Collision and coagulation are important processes for nucleation and Atkin process, Atkin modes. The aerosol particles collide with each other due to their Brownian motion in the air, whereas the coagulation is a process by which two particles come together and stick together to form single particle. Biomass burning and fossil fuel combustion contribute to small accumulation mode particles. However, the coagulation and gas to particle conversion increase size of these particles to mid-high accumulation mode. Coagulation can also move some particles to coarse mode. Now, let us talk about the life cycle of aerosol. Aerosol particles as they are emitted into the atmosphere, they get transported to the upper layers in the atmosphere and can get into the free uh, troposphere FT where they get into the long range transport and winds transport them globally. For example, dust particles emitted from the thar deserts can come over peninsular India, especially due to their convective uplift due to the intense heating over the thar, thar desert. As the aerosol particles get into FT, do the convention, convection can get into the anticyclone and northerly winds in the middle troposphere during the pre-monsoon conditions and can get transported to southern Indian region. In slide 26, this figure represents the life cycle of aerosol in the atmosphere, illustrating different processes such as emission, deposition and transport. During the transportation, these particles can coagulate with other absorbing type of aerosols such as soot and black carbon aerosols and can become more absorbing due to the large surface area of dust particles. The interaction between aerosol particles and radiation is known as aerosol direct effect. The subset of aerosol act as a cloud condensation nuclei when they get exposed to relative humidity more than 100%. The effect of aerosol cloud interaction is called indirect effect of aerosols. Aerosols may impact precipitation processes through this indirect effect. Now, how we can remove these aerosols? Let's talk about this. Aerosols are removed from the atmosphere by dry and wet deposition processes. This can happen due to sedimentation under gravity. Aerosols also get removed by collision with the raindrops and snowflakes and through uptake of aerosols by droplet in cloud. Aerosol can get scavenged by precipitation and the process is called as wet scavenging. Wet scavenging is regarded as the major thing for aerosol globally that removes nearly 80 to 90 percent of aerosol mass from the atmosphere. The process where aerosol particles act as CCN and get scavenged is called nucleation scavenging. The lifetime of aerosol particles depend on their properties. For example, chemical composition, size and height at which these particles are present in the atmosphere. In the free troposphere, the lifetime of aerosol is usually of the order of 3 to 10 days and they can be transported to longer distance in that time. Near the earth's surface in the boundary layer, the lifetime of aerosol is less than a week. In the stratosphere, the lifetime of aerosol can be of one year. The small aerosol particles are removed efficiently due to coagulation with the other particles and they have lifetime from minutes today. The larger particles sediments very fast and have very short lifetime. The accumulation mode particles where coagulation and sediments are not efficient have an average lifetime from 3 to 10 days and they can be removed from the atmosphere by the rain. Now methods of observation of 
aerosols. Physical and chemical characteristics of aerosol particles are measured in different ways. The size range of aerosol particles in the atmosphere varies between 1 to 100, 1 nanometer to 100 micrometer. And they have different shapes, chemical composition, etc. Aerosol particles are categorized in three general sizes, such as PM10 particle size is smaller than 10 micrometer, PM2.5 where the size is smaller than 2.5 micrometer and PM1.0 where the particle size is less than 1 micrometer. In this type of aerosol measurement, measurements, only the particles with diameter less than specified diameter are allowed to pass through the inlet of the sampling system. And thereafter, then these particles are deposited on chemically inert filter papers. The weight of deposited particles can be found out by weighing the filters before and after. These filters can also be used for chemical and physical analysis. Cascade impactors can be used to size segregation of particles to derive the information about the weight of particles of diameter larger than the specified diameters. The cascade impactor samples they then can be used for further chemical and physical analysis. The chemical composition of particles can be known with the different type of advanced mass spectrometers and chromatograms for the aerosols. Transmission electron microscopy that is TEM which can be used to get the information about the shape and size of the aerosol particles. TEM attached with energy dispersive spectroscopy and X-ray diffraction pattern can be obtained to know elemental composition and crystallographic structures of the aerosol particles. The number concentration of aerosol is measured with the condensation particle particles counter that is CPC. The particles are passed over a large supersaturation where they can grow by condensation in order to get detectable by optical detection. The particles size of aerosol particles can be detected with scanning mobility particles sizer that is SMPS. The other instruments that can be used are optical particles counters and aerodynamics particle sizer. The image of the particles can also obtained can also be obtained with the electron microscopes. The measurement methods of the measurements, particles, size and choice of instrument depends on the purpose and the diameter of the interest. Now, the satellite measurement of the aerosols. Satellite based instruments and surface based network of observations are used to make aerosol and cloud measurements. The satellite typically measures the integrated column concentrations, for example, aerosol optical depth and derives the particle size based on radiative transfer algorithms. Radiant energy reflected or emitted by the Earth's surface and atmosphere has signature of the atmospheric and surface properties. By measuring the reflected lights spectral angular and or polarization properties, satellite sensors can also quantify several atmospheric and surface properties. Human eye is sensitive to a narrow range of the solar spectrum with the receptors in the blue, green and red that is RBG. While in a remote sensing, the invisible part of the solar spectrum can also be used, for example, infrared wavelengths the TOMS instruments. Flown since 1978 have two channels sensitive to ultraviolet that is UV light that were discovered to be excellent for observation of the elevated smoke or dust layers above scattering atmosphere. MODIS that is moderate resolution imaging spectroradiometer and MS, MISR that is multi-angle imaging spectro radiometer instruments on the Terra satellites have been measuring global aerosol distributions and properties since the year 2000. 
as it is shown in figure 6. A wide range of aerosol particles is used to distinguish small particles, high concentrations of anthropogenic pollution or smoke from coarse particles such as sea salt and dust. Over land, MODIS uses the 2.1 micrometer to observe the surface cover properties, to estimate surface reflectance at visible wavelengths and to derive the aerosol optical depth. In slide 35, this figure show, uh, represents aerosol optical depth, AOD, that is aerosol optical depth from MODIS satellite measurements. In northern hemisphere, most of the aerosol particles mass enters the atmosphere at latitudes between 30 to 16 uh, degree north. And this latitude belt contains about 88% of all anthropogenic sources, that is human sources for aerosol particles. Glass, GLAS, profiles of aerosols on the regions of the Himalayas indicate elevated layers of the aerosol over that region. In slide 37, this figure represents the constellation of satellites for aerosol, cloud and precipitation measurements. Now, let us talk about the effects of aerosol. The direct effect of aerosol refer to the interaction between solar and terrestrial infrared radiation with aerosol particles before they become cloud particles. The scattering and absorption of solar radiation by aerosol particles reduce the amount of incoming solar radiation. The absorption and scattering of outgoing long wave radiation traps the energy in the Earth's system. This magnitude of the interaction depends on the size, shape, chemical composition and mixing state of the aerosol particles. This produces a net cooling effect due to the solar radiation that is scattering, scattered back to space. However, aerosol particles like black carbon can produce net warming effect in the atmosphere. The net effect of aerosol direct effect is negative radiative forcing as the scattering of solar radiation prevails over the absorption of the radiation by the aerosols. The aerosol and the cloud interaction. Evidences for the indirect effect in this satellite image of clouds of the coast of California is shown in the figure. The ship tracks are a result of high reflectivity regions in the marine citrus clouds formed by increased concentrations of small droplets form on the sulfate particles from emissions by ships. The concentration of water droplets depends directly on the concentration of aerosol particles that can form from cloud condensation nuclei, CCN, and the vapor pressure of the water with respect to the equilibrium saturation vapor pressure. In slide 40, we can see the figure which represents the relative size of the aerosol particle that can act as cloud condensation nuclei, CCN, cloud droplet and raindrops. Whereas in slide 41, the figure represents the ship tracks where ship emissions acting as cloud condensation nuclei and forming cloud droplets. An increase in anthropogenic sources that is human activities of CCN can increase the reflection that is albedo effect of clouds by increasing the droplet concentration while decreasing the average diameter. This effect was named the indirect effect of aerosols by Taumi. While less number of aerosol that is CCN are present, they can form cloud droplets under supersaturated environment which can grow by the expense of available water vapor in the surrounding air and grows until the surrounding environment becomes unsaturated. Some of these droplets grow to the raindrops which may fall out of the cloud as rain. Over marine environment, these processes take place at a lower altitude and raindrop forms at a low level. In a polluted cloud, 
more aerosols compete for the uptake of water vapor. Cloud droplets does not grow and remain small or grow much slower than in a clean cloud. As a result, more numerous small, smaller cloud droplets have larger surface area than fewer larger cloud droplets forms. These clouds are more reflective and can send more radiation back to space. This effect is called cloud albedo effect. Since the droplets are small, they do not make raindrops. Figure 11 shows the observations made for cloud droplets, number concentration over the areas with different concentrations of the aerosol particles. In slide 44, this figure represents the indirect effect of aerosol particles. Whereas in slide 45, the figure represents aircraft observations indicating increase in cloud droplets with aerosol number concentrations. Atmospheric aerosol and climate. Atmospheric aerosol particles play an important role in the radiative budget in the climate system. The incoming solar radiation are scattered and can also be absorbed, for example, black carbon, by the aerosol particles. These particles also scatter and, and absorb outgoing long wave radiations emitted by the earth and the atmosphere. The term radiative forcing is defined as the difference between incoming solar radiation and outgoing radiation from the top of the atmosphere of the earth to the space. The positive radiative forcing indicates the warming of the climate system while negative radiative forcing indicates cooling of the climate system. The findings of Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that is IPCC noted that the aerosol radiative forcing due to aerosol direct effect to be uh, minus 0.45 watts per meter square with uncertainty range of minus 0.95 to plus 0.05 watt per meter square and due to aerosol indirect effect 0.45 watt per meter square with uncertainty range of minus 1.2 to 0 watt per meter square. Finally, we can conclude that aerosols are the tiny ubiquitous particles in the atmosphere which are originated both from the natural and anthropogenic sources. In the northern hemisphere, the latitudinal belt between 30 degree north to 60 degree north contribute as high as 88 percent of all anthropogenic aerosol particles in the atmosphere. Aerosols from anthropogenic sources generally have sizes below 1 micrometer whereas natural aerosols are mainly greater than 1 micrometer in size. Examples of aerosol particles include sea spray, mineral and agricultural dust, volcanic materials, biogenic particles like pollens or VOCs that is volatile organic compounds, airborne viruses and bacteria, smoke, soot, black carbon and road dust. Wet scavenging is the most important process for aerosol removal globally. This removes about 80 to 90 percent of aerosol mass from the atmosphere. Globally, aerosol has a net cooling effect. The radiative forcing due to aerosol effect is about minus 0.45 watt per meter square. Atmospheric aerosol determines the radiation budget of the earth. Global evapotransportation and diffuse radiation dynamics among other things. Hence, aerosol has an important role in day-to-day weather and climate system as a whole. The aerosol particles can adversely affect the human health, particularly the respiratory problems when exposed to particulate matter of 2.5 micrometer size, that is PM 2.5. The cloud droplets are formed on the subsets of aerosol particles called as clouds condensation nuclei. Aerosol particles are the one of the largest uncertainties in the climate prediction. Thanks for the patience. Thanks to all.